Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Coding with Kenny G. This is episode 21 and this episode as well we are going to focus on some of these visual aspects of the game. Uh, it is not completely required for you to do this uh, in order to make the game functional but it uh, will uh, look a little bit better uh, if you do. So. I'm just gonna show you what I've done here because in my case I have imported the actual game models used in the game of uh, Viking Chess Nefertafel into this project but this is uh, a great chance for you to just try to create something yourself or maybe get a friend to make it for you if you know somebody that does 3D uh, if not, try to make something really, really simple in Blender. Free software, just uh, something that looks a little bit more like a game piece instead of these uh, cylinders that we used so far. So these are the actual models uh, that are used in the game and they are not modeled by me, it's modeled by uh, a 3D modeler uh, whom I work with. Uh, his name is Lars Erik, really nice guy. Um, and he has made all of these three models. So you have the uh, attacker models here, and then you have the defenders here, and then the king in the middle. Now they're a little bit dark because they're uh, top lighted, but that makes sense in our uh, in our game view up here, because uh, most players like to uh, either play actually full on top down. Uh, it might be wise to uh, update these visuals as well later, but uh, it, it's starting to look like something, right? So this is pretty cool. I just want to show you what we are actually doing in the project itself uh, for uh, making these changes. So I'm just going to go into a project uh, 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 project uh, <laughs> asset does database. Uh, yeah and the project hierarchy here sorry uh, so I made a new folder it's called 3d models inside the art folder and that's where I placed uh, my 3d models uh, with their uh, with their uh, textures as well so uh, uh, these models were of course created with uh, textures and uh, normal maps and everything uh, but uh, for us what I did here these are our uh, are our are our <laughs> sorry are our old models so uh, uh, just these cylinders right I've renamed uh, the old models to uh, prototype so attack a prefab prototype the same for defender and for the king so the the way to work with this is for example with the attacker I just duplicated that model, the attacker prefab, uh, which was a cylinder. If you open it in a, a prefab view, uh, the only thing I needed to do here, uh, in my case, was to drag and drop uh, my new attacker model onto the uh, parent object here. Then you see that it comes in. Uh, like this, I can just delete the old uh, cylinder, and here is our new model. Uh, the only thing is that it's not assigned a material yet. So in most cases, depending on how the 3D model is exported, you get access to um, the mesh itself, uh, and then it's assigned a material by default here in the mesh render, and that's where. Uh, in my case, I uh, put the materials uh, for each model in the folder of the 3D model. It kind of makes sense in that uh, regard. Instead of putting that in uh, in uh, its uh, in this uh, materials folder, because uh, 3D models are kind of composite objects that uh, contain everything, so the texture, the uh, the model itself, and the material. So what I did here. Well, was that I assigned the attacker material onto uh, the material in the mesh renderer. There we go. 
and this uh, material is already assigned all the textures and stuff. Like I showed you last episode, in the material we need to assign different stuff to different things. So for example the diffuse uh, needs to be in the albedo and then normal map and then uh, I have a, a special map called roughness that just uh, gives it a little bit uh, extra um, contrast here and there. Uh, but mainly for most uh, use cases, uh, at least for you, uh, the easier thing is to just deal with uh, the albedo and the normal and you get a lot of um, action out of just that. Uh, and these guys you bake them uh, out in the 3D software that you were using. So you can do that in Blender. Uh, but if you're unfamiliar with using Blender and 3D software, try to keep things as simple as possible. It takes a little uh, time and effort to learn to use, for example, Blender. Um, but it's possible. There are a lot of YouTube tutorials and stuff around to check out. Uh, so please do. Anyway, so uh, for this project, I've just uh, now created a um, new prefabs, right? I've created new prefabs for each actor type. So you have now, now an attacker prefab, a defender prefab, and a king prefab. Uh, and that's it. The only thing that we need to do now is to uh, update that inside the board. So uh, the board uh, formation spawner script decides which um, actor to uh, spawn, right? Uh, the actual prefab itself. So these are our new prefabs. The attacker prefab, defender prefab and king prefab. Please note something that I do myself regularly is to directly uh, work on the ob object in the hierarchy. At this point in time, we are now working with a prefab. So just get used to opening up the actual prefab itself uh, and modify there instead. Because then uh, if I use that prefab board in other scenes, then uh, they would uh, use the correct prefabs and stuff. Um, so I just assigned the prefabs and uh, then we're ready to go. Also, I modified the spawn offset. So this variable here decides uh, how far high above the board uh, these guys spawn. So now they're pretty much flush. Uh, down with uh, the tile, but they're 0 0.01 units above on the y-axis. So it looks a little bit better when we spawn them. One thing that is not so cool is that uh, they're all rotated uh, the same direction. Maybe we could uh, fix that. So the thing that I want to be working on next uh, is to um, start implementing some actual game mechanics. So for example, uh, allow uh, our guys to capture another piece. Uh, so we could do that and uh, we could do uh, the whole uh, rotate these guys towards center tile uh, so that the, the board itself just looks a little bit better. But uh, yeah. I'll think about it. Uh, for now, I just want to get this episode done, so it's going to be a short one. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one where I have decided uh, which uh, game mechanics to uh, focus on. So I'll see you in the next one.